whether you install packages from your distro's package repo, app images from some random website, flat packs or snaps, you have to be wary about the potential for a malicious application. Whether it's just an app that is pretending to have features that it doesn't have, or an app that is masquerading as another one trying to trick users into downloading it. And recently, the latter occurred on the Snap Store. Now to preempt the obvious comments I'm going to get, this is not a Snap bad video. They are, but that is irrelevant to the topic we're talking about today. This is a problem that can occur on any application store that has horrible moderation practices. And just a few days ago, this post was made on the Snapcraft forum. Phishing app on the Snap Store. Is my computer compromised? The Ledger Live app, this app right here, obviously is a crypto app, is a phishing app disguising as the official app for ledger.com. This is a legitimate company that offers a crypto hardware wallet. This app isn't the real version of their app though. The way it works is it queries you for your backup code, a list of words also known as your seed phrase. In a dumb lapse of judgment, I was scammed by this app and lost a substantial amount of money. What worries me more is my computer, passwords, files could be compromised. But if I understand it correctly, snaps are isolated somehow. Could it have read my file system? Now, there is a way to check that in like the snap commands. And yes, it did actually have access to his home folder. But assuming this is the same person, I'd be more worried about losing the 10,000 US dollars. Obviously, before taking any sort of action, there needs to be some sort of proof this is a phishing app. Do you have any evidence that this is actually attempting any phishing apart from the behavior you described I mean? That is, reading his home directory. The cryptocurrency was transferred out of my wallet against my will to an unknown address, which, at least to me, seems like a pretty cut and dry case. But that was not the end of it. The following day, another post was made. Fake crypto apps. These are fake apps which steal funds from user accounts must be removed immediately. Another version of the Ledger Live app. A version of the Trezor wallet and also the Electrum wallet. The individual tools don't exactly matter here. All of these are crypto wallets and are all trying to steal your seed phrase to gain access to your internet money. Now, the author is technically a different account. It's the same one for these three here though. But look, considering the timing, I think it's fair to say this is all the same person doing this. I know someone's going to try to rush to sandboxing is bad. This is some massive snap vulnerability. And in this case, that's not what is happening. This is purely a phishing attack. The only way that sandboxing could have helped is sandboxing your keyboard out of the application. If you start typing data into a malicious application, Nothing is going to help you. The sole problem is having the malicious application on your system and in the app store. I've been saying the term seed phrase a bunch and I realized I hadn't actually explained it. So seed phrases are basically a recovery code. So if you lose access to your wallet, like uh, your hard drive dies for example, but you still have your seed phrase, you would then use that to recover your wallet. Now if you give that to a malicious actor, they can also recover your wallet, and now they have access to all of your crypto. I can understand one malicious crypto app. You see this app being uploaded, you're like, okay, it's an app being uploaded. What really confuses me is this app existing on the store at the exact same time. These are clearly the same thing by a different author. And then these three apps all being uploaded by a single author. These are competing products. These would not be uploaded by the same author. That makes absolutely no sense. And on the same day. To me, this feels like a severe failure in moderation practices. This is not something that should ever be able to happen. This is not like a calculator and a text editor and a browser all being uploaded by a single user. These are crypto apps. These are things that people are going to store their money in. Before letting any of these apps on the store, there should be an additional layer of auditing unless there is a clear indication these are coming directly from the developer.
This prompted a very quick response from Canonical. Temporary suspension of automatic snap registration following security incident. As a consequence of these reports, the Snap Store team has immediately taken down these snaps and they can no longer be searched or installed. Now, if you have the link directly to the page, the pages are still going to be here, but you as a user cannot search for them and also cannot install them. If you did already have them installed, an update was pushed by Canonical, replacing the package with an empty package. So the application is effectively no longer on your system, but the snap is still technically installed. So just go and remove that and everything will be fine. Furthermore, the Snap Store team has placed a temporary manual review requirement on all new snap registrations effective immediately. If you try to register a new snap while the requirement is active, you will be prompted to request reserved name. Upon a successful manual review from the Snap Store staff, the name will be registered. Uploading and releasing revisions for existing snaps will not be affected. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause our snap publishers and developers. However, we believe it is most prudent action at this time. You shouldn't be apologizing to the snap publishers and developers. You should be apologizing to the users that this is one, a temporary action, and two, not the way you've always done it. What do you mean there has been automatic registration of new names this entire time? A basic, basic security practice has been completely ignored. This should not be a temporary thing you're doing. This should be a revitalization of your entire security practices. And this goes out to FlatHub as well. I don't know FlatHub's specific requirements here, but if they have automatic name registration, Stop doing that. Have somebody manually review the names that are being used. That is such a simple way to catch applications that are trying to be malicious. I know it is going to annoy some developers, some publishers, if they have to wait like a day, a week, even a month for a new application they want to publish to be on the store. But for the sake of user safety, please just at least manually review the name. Now, I do think you can make some exceptions for known trusted entities that have already been uploading apps to the store, like uh, JetBrains, KDE, Mozilla. This makes sense. Like, if something is coming from Mozilla and it's verified it's from Mozilla, you can generally assume it's going to be a safe application. But if you're some, like, random Joe Schmo developer, you've made no applications in the Snap Store already, you don't have any sort of reputation here, look, you're probably perfectly safe. But you can wait a little bit of time just to get your app released on the store. Rant over, back to the main thing. Whilst these applications have been replaced with these empty packages, one thing Snap doesn't do is inform the user that this has happened. So if you installed one of these applications, you're only going to know because you saw this video or you saw like an article on OMG Ubuntu. Snap itself, whether it's in your application store, whether it's your notification system, doesn't give you an indication that something has happened here. That's something that should probably be improved. If you have the ability to replace packages with an empty package, I'm sure that's not going to be a major addition to add as well. Now, this is not the first time that basically malware has been found on the Snap Store. The last occurrence was back in 2018 with a crypto miner. You might be wondering, why is it crypto for every scam and every malware? It's because pretty much there's no regulation in the crypto space. So if you lose your money and that money is crypto, well, you're not getting that money back. It now belongs to the criminals. Also, it's really easy to get money out of people with crypto because a lot of people, even if they're in the crypto space, are not the smartest with how they handle their money. As I briefly touched on in the rant, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like this can't happen to FlatHub or the Debian repos or the Arch repos or especially places like the AUR. But right now, it's not happening, and I believe for Debian, it hasn't ever happened. Please correct me on that if I am wrong. But right now, while it is not happening, 
you should be looking at your practices and looking at how you handle moderation, how you handle new apps coming onto the store, and are any of these same problems present in your store? And for something like the AUR, where this basically has to be allowed to happen for the way the AUR functions, are there any mitigation strategies you can put in place to make sure that when it does happen, that it is resolved as quickly as possible, and that users know the problem has occurred? Take this giant canonical moderation failure and use it as a learning experience. And that goes to canonical as well. This, as I said, should not be a temporary practice put in place. It should be permanent, along with looking at the other ways the apps are handled, and maybe there are other things that can be dealt with so that in the future, this doesn't happen again. As much as I enjoy making videos ranting about snaps, I don't want people losing 10,000 US dollars. That is a bad thing. So that is going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you happen to install any of these apps? Did you even know they were malicious? I would love to know. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I wonder if YouTube will try to flag this as a finance video.